Hi guys, and welcome back to another Ibracorp video. Thanks for coming back and checking out the channel today. It's a pleasure to have you here, as usual. In today's video, we're going to be talking about custom formats in Radar. And the reason why we're going to look at custom formats is because we really want to fine-tune our libraries. You might already be using Radar, you might have been using it for years, like myself. And you've come across Trash Guides, or you haven't yet and you want to know more about it and why you should be using Trash's guides, as well as our hard linking video in the past, which I'll put down in the description for you. And if you already have Radar running and you're using a couple of tips and tricks from Trash and from us here at Ibracorp, and uh, you just wanna be able to optimize your playback for your media servers, this is gonna be the video for you. In addition, we're also gonna be showing you how to automate this process using Notifier. Now we haven't brought up Notifier yet, it's been on our list for a long time, the developer of Notifier is with us in Ibracorp, uh, Nitsua, and his hard work on this app is absolutely phenomenal. So we're going to give you a scratch of the surface of what Notifier can do and how we can use it to automate with Trash Guide so that we can really have a, let's say, another automation level on top of our already automated library. If you want better playback, better compatibility, more specific formatting of the content you get and trying to eliminate things that you know just don't work for your setup, or for your clients, if you have family or friends using your Plex, for example, this is gonna be the video for you. And I really hope you guys enjoy it. So stick around and let's just get stuck into it. So guys, we've worked together with Trash to bring this video together for you today. And a big thank you to him uh, and Nitsua for working with us on getting the topic out for you guys in the community. As part of our team meeting yesterday, we discussed that we really want to try and focus on our community developers who are working really hard to put stuff out there for you guys. And they do that in their own time and volunteer their own time. So please, at any point, if you think that either the trash guides or the notifier application are suitable for you and you're happy with how they work and what they do, be sure to support them for their hard work. You can find links to support either of them on the notifier website and on the Trash Guides website as well. There are also perks that come along for supporting them if you so choose. So be sure to really take a look at what you get for it. It's really, really cool. And again, really worth your time to invest in. So you might be here wondering what are custom formats? Why do I need to use? The first thing I'm gonna say is there's no amount of videos that we can do that is gonna cover what each and every single custom format can do. And the reason is in discussion with Trash himself is that it's really subjective. What you might want for your media setup could be completely different to somebody else. And on top of that, it changes all the time. Terminology changes all the time, filters change all the time, all that sort of stuff. So what we're gonna show you is what are custom formats? How do we use a couple of those custom formats and why we would use them? And then it really comes down to you taking that methodology, going to the written guides on Trash's website here. So trash-guides.info and applying your own sort of critical thinking to what you would need. So this will hopefully give you the toolkit to understand how to use them, why to use them, and then you can figure out exactly what you actually want to use. So as I said here on the website, we are going under radar and then we have collection of custom formats. But right above that, we also have how to import custom formats, how to update them and how to set them up. So let's go to how to set them up to start off with. And it's gonna give you a little bit of a description here. There isn't a best score setup, being that everyone has their own personal preferences. So re again, really important we take that in. Do you prefer high quality audio? Do you have a 5.1 surround sound setup? Ideally, then you would want 5.1 surround sound media. Uh, do you prefer, you know, high quality encodes? Or whatever the case might be. That's why it's really important that you assess what actually works for you. So here, Trash has tried to explain a couple of personal used examples. So the basics is we're going to explain where to set up the custom formats after you've added them. So in Radar, if you don't know, if you're in Radar, go to the uh, left hand side in the settings and you've got custom formats in there. You've also got the profiles. So the way it works is you have a profile. Right now you would already have, uh, let's say, any or Blu-ray or whatever the case might be. And then you can create custom formats. Now those custom formats will actually then apply to the profiles. So what we can do is actually set what's known as scoring. So we can say, if the video is 5.1, I want you to give that 100 points. 
However, if the video is from this particular source, I want you to give it negative a thousand points. Radar will then calculate all that, obviously, and it will be able to say, okay, we found five videos. And of those five videos, two of them are worth 200 points, one is worth 100 points, one is worth 50 points, for example. It's going to go ahead and pick the one with the higher score because it meets more of your requirements due to the custom formats. So as you can see, what this is going to do is really fine tune exactly what we collect. We can also obviously use that for when we want to upgrade from the minimum custom format score. So we can say, you know, at the minimum, I want you to reach this score for the media and stop at this limit. Now, the logic is all explained here really well by Trash. So we don't want to take up too much time doing this in the video because we want to focus on the methodology. So please make yourself familiar with it. It's really important to understand how this all works. So under here, under examples, we have releases you should avoid. So for example, this is a must have for every quality profile in Trash's opinion. All these custom formats, make sure you don't get low quality releases. So if we expand that, here's the scoring that I was saying. So the custom format he has, uh, BR Disc 1. Okay, if we go under the collection of custom formats just here, we have all of these here written out for us. And here's the index to make it a little, a little bit easier to, to read. So if we go under MISC here, we can see we have a couple of different ones here. We also have unwanted. So BR disk is one of them. And if you expand that, you can have a closer read on what it's doing, how it works, and what the recommended scoring is, the settings. And this is where Notify is going to come in handy for us. At the moment, we, we, have, we can do this manually anytime we want. Okay, We can import these to uh, Radar by simply copying them, just like this. And then if I go to Radar, here we are in Radar, we go to Settings, Custom Formats, we can click the plus, we click on Import, we paste what we copied and we click on Import. And that basically just imports that code and it gives us the custom profile. Easy as that, click Save, done, right? So if we go ahead and click Save, we now have these custom formats. Now just ignore all these other ones, I'll get to them when we get to Notifier. But we have BR Disk here now. If we go to our profiles, here's a quality profile 1080p, okay? I, I look for Blu-ray and I want it max at 1080. I don't really do much 4K on my home server. So under here, we have the formatting and the scoring. Now you can see the ones from Notifier here have the scoring already put in for us at negative 10,000. And if we go back to the guide, that's what Trash recommends for the BR disc one, for example. And this is the one that I just added, so I haven't actually set a score on it. These ones are synchronized with Notifier Notifier synchronizes with Trash Guide's official guides, so then we don't have to worry about that. I will add the Trash Guide's sync function of Notifier is for supporters only, so you can do a one-time donation or an ongoing donation, and you'll be able to get those features out of Notifier. And I really recommend you do help support the project. It's a really fantastic app. So we have BR Disk, and we're saying with BR Disk, it's worth negative 10,000 points. So even if we had another one, so let's go ahead and add another one. And let's go for one that we reckon actually is worth more. So something that we really actually enjoy, that we really want. Um, we could basically say under audio or under movie versions or any of these headers, for example, let's say we really like HBO Max for whatever reason. Let's click on HBO Max. We'll expand that. There's a little written description. Then we have our code. Let's copy that. And we come back to Radar and we go to our custom formats. We click plus, we import that again, we click import. It's taken in our name, HBO Max, we click on save. So now we have this one here called HBO Max. Let's go back to our profiles. We go into 1080, that's the profile we want it on. And we've got HBO Max here, so by default it's zero. But let's say I want to give that 200 points. You can see it's automatically pushed it to the top. And we'll say, let's say this BR disk, it wouldn't really make sense because we already have one here with the exact same details. But let's just say, for example, this was something else, we'll say 50 points. The radar will assess that and it will say, okay, I found five releases. Two of them are HBO Max. That's worth 200 points. Then we have BR disk is 50. So it will say, well, I've got 200 points here. This is worth more. I'm gonna pick this release. You can see how that can really pay off we're looking for very specific files or media information. Now let's just eliminate this. We'll put this back to zero. We'll click save. Um, we'll go back to the custom formats and I'm actually just gonna remove these ones because they are duplicates. So we'll delete these ones. Now when you go to the collection of custom formats, this is available to everyone by the way. 
Um, if you are a supporter of Trash and you donate to him, you actually get access to a couple of different formats as well through their Discord uh, server. So be sure to look at that. If you do end up supporting Trash, have a look at the perks you get. You can get some more customized profiles and things like that. But the custom formats that are available for everyone now are already fantastic. And I highly recommend you do support him for that. So if we come down, you have a whole collection of things. Now, after speaking with Trash, one of the most common things that happens is people stumble across the page. They've read the guides. They've, you know, now want to look at custom formats to really optimize their media libraries. They add everything. That is definitely not recommended. If you do that, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because certain profiles will do certain things. And depending on your setup, it's going to really impact it. So let's say, for example, we've got 264 and 265 here profiles. Let's, let's go down to them. And if we expand the description, he's written here, if you want maximum compatibility and have much better direct play support, then use 264 for 720 and 1080. Under 265, you'll see, please don't forget to read the following. And if we click on that, there's a little bit more explanation. So it's a shame that most 265 releases or use the 264 as source what results in low quality releases. So it gives a good example and his golden rule is 720 to 1080, go for 264 and 4K, go for 265. And you can look into that as much as you want, whatever your personal preference is. But that's just an example of why we really need to focus on what profiles we're getting. Don't just grab everything. And you can see exactly what he says in the description as well. So make sure that we're matching the scoring because that scoring will really judge how Radar uh, decides which releases to grab. So I can tell you guys from personal experience, I actually put off looking at custom formats for years up until only a couple of weeks ago. And the reason is I thought it personally was very overwhelming and I thought it was for really uh, media aficionados who really want a specific format just for their you know entertainment value. But I was obviously wrong. There's actually a lot of reasons why you want to look at custom formats. And I'm, I'm hopefully we're answering that question for you today. So even though you might be overwhelmed with all this stuff, all these different profiles you could use, you're not gonna need all of them. And the explanation behind them all is different. So pick one that you might be interested in and see what it will do. So like this one here for unwanted, if we click on 265, this specifically will stop getting 265 encodes for 720, 1080p quality. Now that's perfect because we then don't have to worry about doing that manually. We'll allow radar to filter that out for us. So that's a brief explanation of the custom formats. What I'm gonna do now is show you Notifier, and we're gonna show you how we can integrate that. Keep in mind again, this is uh, the, the trash sync feature is for donators only. However, Notifier has over 30 integrations and it can do many different things. So currently I'm inside of Notifier right now. And uh, to get to this, it's notifier.com, spelt like this, N-O-T-I-F-I-A-R-R.com, and it will take you to the main dashboard page, I guess you could say. If you don't have an account, obviously create an account, sign in, and you'll be on the same screen that we are. The only exception is we have obviously the patron supporter account, and so yours may look different here and there. Just keep that in mind that once you do pay as a supporter, you will unlock other features as well. Now there's instructions to do that under the support project link, if you just click on that. There's also instructions here to make sure you get the right perks, uh, and if you have any trouble, be sure to join their Discord as well. Now under integration setup, you might be overwhelmed with how much is in here. And something you should really understand is this may not be useful for everyone, but Notifier honestly is one of the baseline apps that we should have been covering a long time ago. And it took us a while to get to it. Sorry, Nitsua. So on the integration page, if we go to manage integrations, you can see we've got, there's 35 integrations available. And uh, as you scroll through, you'll see exactly how many there are that you could be using right now for your self-hosted setup. And again, a big win to us self-hosters. So you've got almost every media server here, media server apps and companion apps and, and automation apps and everything like that, it's in here. You've got Plex Meta Manager, you've got uh, Qubit, you've got Prowler, uh, Radar, Reddit, everything. And you can have it send you notifications to your Discord server, have summaries sent to your Discord server. There are so many things it can do. So in the interest of not overwhelming you, I'm only gonna show you the trash guides section for today. And if you guys are interested, let us know in the comments. We'd love to cover more of Notifier and we will in future. But if there's anything specifically you actually wanna guide on, 
drop it in the comments and let us know. We'd love to know about it. You can also join our Discord and let us know there. So like I said, the first thing you do is go to notify.com, make an account, and then grab your API key. If you don't know where that is, you just click on your name here and it'll take you to your profile and it will give you an API key here. The next thing to do is back on your server, there are a lot of things that you can get away with without needing the client, which is the Docker container that runs on your server end. You can get away with a lot without needing the client and it's all described on the website. So on notifier.com, for example, we've got manage integrations and then underneath here, it will tell you whether the client is required. So for all these things where it says client required, no, you can use it without having to run the client on your server. Although I still recommend you do it anyway, it doesn't take much to do and having it run will have it expanded ready to go when you wanna use those other features. Now in today's video, we're gonna show you with Docker Compose, the same is equivalent when you're using a container on the CA store in Unraid, nothing's gonna be really different. So just match what we're seeing here in terms of uh, Docker Compose variables and move them over into your container variable. So there's nothing too special, we've got our ports here. We've also got uh, the volume that we're mapping it to. Now guys, we just did a Docker Compose video a couple of weeks ago, so make sure you watch that if you don't know how Docker Compose works. Um, it's all explained in there. We have our volumes here, and we also have our labels for traffic, which we always encourage. A couple of uh, environment variables, the network we want it to run on, and uh, that's about it. Once you start that up, it'll be available on 5454. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can expose the ports, using expos, which we explain in Docker Compose video, or we can just actually forward the ports out at 5454, which is what we've done here. I then set up port forwarding in my router just to make sure that I can always get through. Now, once you've created the Compose file on your server, go ahead and Docker Compose up. So bring up that file uh, and get Notifier installed and running. Once it's running, it will create a notifier.conf file and it will likely stop itself or it'll just, you know, error in the logs until you correct it. So in the file that it creates, notifier.conf, and guys, again, if you're wondering what we're using here to do all this editing, we're using code server, which we covered in a video as well. Highly recommend, it makes work like this so much easier than uh, working in the terminal. So we've got the API key, we've pasted our API key here between these uh, quotation marks. We scroll down and you'll see stuff that is commented out. You just have to basically set it up the way you wanna set it up. Now, if I come down to the star settings, you can see that we've got Prowler, Radar, and Sonar uncommented. If you wanted to use anything else, you've got LiDAR here, for example. Uh, in code server, control and then forward slash will uncomment it or comment it. And just highlight the lot and do it that way and basically fill it out. So for Prowler, we've got Prowler, we've got our URL because it's running locally and it's on the same custom Docker network. We can just refer to the container name and the port that it uses. We then also put the API key from each app in there as well. So that gives us our Sonar, Radar, and Prowler. I don't use Radar or LiDAR. Under our download client configs, we also have uh, NZBD, so I've put that in there as well for myself. If you guys are using Qubit or Deluge, do the same here as well. Now, for the trash guides side of things, we don't really need this, but I'm doing it anyway because we're here in the file, we might as well set it up. The same applies for all these other integrations as well. So if you're using Plex, go ahead and do the Plex stuff. I haven't done it yet myself. I still need to do it, but we can uncomment that and fill out Plex as well. We've got Tortuli settings here. We can uncomment those. You've got MySQL snapshots, service checks that you can work on as well. So much, honestly, it's such an amazing application. But for the purpose of what we want, we definitely want to make sure Radar and Sonar are set up in here. Now, once you've set that all up, Docker Compose down or pull it again and start it up again. Get the container running with all these new variables and you should be right to go. Now, if you're looking at your Docker logs, always make sure you check in the container logs. And if it all looks good, you're right to go. If you're seeing issues with it communicating out, obviously just make sure that it can communicate out. Um, if you're using Orthelia, for example, over the top, make sure you've got bypasses in place for the API to connect. And the other thing that you will need to do if you're using Cloudflare, so if you are using Cloudflare, the other thing you'll need to do is add in a web application firewall rule. So under security, WAF, go under here and create a rule. You're allowed to create up to five on the free account. We'll give it a name of notifier, user agent equals notifier, and we're then allowing that through. So go ahead and click save and that will should allow any communication to happen uh, without being blocked by Cloudflare. Now, depending how everything else went, you should be ready to start setting up the trash synchronization. So 
in our starting up the client, we sign into the website and then we need to go to media requests. Now, even if you're not gonna be using media requests, we do need to actually set this up. Now, if that's all working fine so far, we then wanna to go to the notifier client configuration. So let's click on that. And once you open that up, this is basically it talking back to the client, which we're running on our server. You can see the uptime that that's been up, how long it's been connected for, the last synchronization, etc. And underneath that, we have the connection. And you can see here, this is required for things such as dashboard, channel stats, trash sync, Plex notifications, media requests, etc. There's also a wiki link, so make sure you read that if you're not too sure. It gives a little bit more explanation as well. But basically here, you can put, uh, if you're using a domain name and it's accessible, you can put the domain with the port number of uh, the notifier container uh, or whatever the case might be. Now my scenario, I've actually got a static IP, so I just use the IP and the port number. Then you click this little icon, and if it's green, like it is here, you're right to go. If it's red, it's unable to connect, so you'll have to do some troubleshooting. That might mean that your port forwarding notifier in your router, uh, making sure that that's accessible, whatever the case might be. And once you've got the green light, keep in mind guys, it's not my real IP address, it's just a little placeholder I put in there. Uh, once you've got the green light, you go down, and you'll see all these options here. Now, if you don't see these options or they're different, like I said, TrashSync is a supporter product, so only donators will probably see that. But under Trash Sync, we can set the interval for how often we want that to sync. So we've got 15, 30, 45, one hour, or completely disable it. I've set that to 15 minutes. Um, I like it hot off the plate as soon as uh, Trash finishes his hard long day working and he gets home and he does a little edit and he posts it. I want it 15 minutes later. I just can't wait. And uh, same goes for all these other ones as well. So you can synchronize uh, radar and sonar, for example. Now with that all done, that's looking good. We can also trigger a client scan if we want by just clicking underneath, you know, which service we want it to check for. So currently these are disabled as you can see, but we can just click it on. Now you'll see trash guides. Now you won't see that straight away because we haven't set that integration up. Under manage integrations, we can simply click that. Here's our massive list of integrations that are supported. And we scroll down and we see trash guides here. This will keep your sonar release profiles and radar custom formats plus scores in sync with trash guides. We just select that to on. And once we close it, you should see it here. Go ahead and click the little cog icon and it's gonna expand this. Now, if you don't see these bottom three, then the connection step that we just showed you before this didn't work and you need to make sure that that's working. Once you do make sure it's working, these three options will show up underneath. You also have some other stuff here as well, and um, it's an important explanation of what's going on. Now, one thing I didn't mention is that if you're already using Trash's custom formats, you're actually better off removing them completely and then running it through here if you're choosing to do it via Notifier. This has been advice given to me by Nitsua as well as Trash. It's just better that way. So make sure you remove them from your current server that you've done manually and let it be managed um, by Notifier. However, Notifier does have the smarts to detect that the custom format already exists and will sync it, or it's it's detected that something similar is there but needs um, to be matched up manually. But just to make your life easier, why not just remove them and then run it through here? So then underneath all this, we have custom formats. Again, everything we just saw on his website. We also see two check boxes. One is to sync the trash custom format names, and the other is to sync the condition names. The reason for that is if you don't do it, and this was explained to me by Trash, if you don't do it, it may come through with all these hyphenated dash notifier names on them. And that could cause problems for you um, processing data or anything like that. So you're better off checking those boxes, making sure they match exactly what's on the website, AKA it'll be true HD Atmos. And then have a look and really try and understand exactly what these are doing and whether they're the ones for you. Okay, now this particular panel inside of Notifier doesn't explain them, which is why you really need to read them on Trash's website or join his Discord in order to get more information about something and how it works. So here we have the audio channels. We have all the stuff that we just saw. I'm gonna go down a little bit. You can see here, these ones are green. Now that means we've set up this radar server, okay? This radar has a server going, radar one, and they're green. Now we have the toggle, so we set them to on, and as soon as we do that, it will synchronize it. So let's say this one here, obfuscated. Again, this may not apply to you. We have 265 for 720, 1080p. 
Now I've read the description of that. I understand what it's going to do. I understand that it is gonna be suitable for my media setup. So I'm gonna synchronize that. I'm gonna go ahead and check that to on and that will now synchronize. So if we go back to radar now and we simply refresh the page, you can see that the 265 is now synchronized. Let's click on that and we can see that it's pulled everything through for us. Now let's go to profiles and under profiles, we'll open that up. Here's that custom format, but it's got a score of zero. That is where the next part comes in. So let's go back to notifier again. I've closed up the custom formats tab and we open up the profiles and scores tab. So let's open that. And here we have our radar instance. So let's pick a profile. 1080p is our profile. It's gonna give you what your score currently is and what Trash's score is. You can see our current score is zero for that custom format, but we do want it to be in sync. So let's either check that here or we can just simply check the top here and click on save score sync. Done, now that's done. Let's go back to radar again. And I'm simply going to refresh this now. Open it up and sure enough, we now have our score back in again. And now it will stay in sync. So if Trash decides to change that down the track, that will automatically synchronize for us. How good is that? Honestly, how awesome is that? So now I can be confident knowing that I will just grab 1080p content or 720p content in 264 encode, which will hopefully make sure that I get as much direct plays as possible and, and as little transcoding as possible at the same time. Now you can imagine if you've set up a brand new library, you've got no content at all, you've got a brand new library going, you only wanna grab certain things, this is gonna help you so much. Considering the price of hard drive space, storage space, uh, CPU power, all of those uh, internet bandwidth, all of those things in between, this is gonna really give you the maximum output and really fine tune what you're grabbing. Uh, I think we've all been there. If you've you know, been with this game for a while, you know that you can end up with some really, really, really bad content um, you know, sometimes you've got 60 gig files when you could easily get something at 30 gig with the same quality and better playback. But all those things come from experience and someone like Trash who spends all his time doing that specific task really pays off and there's a reason why we really want to support people like that. As well as Notifier, of course, because to be able to automatically synchronize that stuff and not require you to stay on top of it all the time is a really, really important uh, perk. So we showed you radar and we showed you the profiles and scores. Now Sonar does not have custom formats at this time, but they do have release profiles as well. So if we come down here under Sonar, you can synchronize the profile and the scores. So low quality groups, peer-to-peer, um, -peer, all this stuff is explained on Trash's website. So make sure you read up on them and see whether they apply for you as well. One more thing, one final thing, under custom formats, again under radar, if we expand that, and we scroll down to the bottom under patron testing. You'll see this here, it says they're not publicly posted for everyone to use. With that being said, if you use them and need support, you do not use the normal support channel. There's a special channel set up for those who are using these profiles. Now these profiles are very specially built and they achieve very special tasks. If you want maximum playback, and maximum compatibility, for example, some of these profiles are the ones you'll be looking for. But again, they're for patron supporters, but hey, Buy the man a coffee, buy Nitsuo a coffee, get on board with it. Not gonna cost you much and honestly, it's gonna revolutionize your library. So I highly recommend you do that. Read up on them as well. Um, to get more information about these, you'll need to join Trash's Discord and, and chat about it there. You can also join our Discord as well. Trash is a community leader with us on Ibricorp. And uh, if it's an initial question, something you might need to know related to the video today as well as Trash Guides, join us as well. And we'll refer you on, of course, if it's more specialized for this topic. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's uh, an interesting topic to cover and there's certain ways that we have to do the video. I hope you'll understand what I'm saying, um, where it's just a little bit safer to show you certain things without showing you certain things if you know what I'm getting at. So if you're interested in more information that isn't necessarily shown in the video that we can't put on YouTube, join us in Discord and let us have a chat about it and we'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, again, we have uh, Trash there as well, and we also have Nitsua there as well. And a big thank you to both of them for working with us for today's video. We can't wait to help support projects like that again in the future. If you wanna optimize your library and you wanna get the best possible bang for buck, 
make sure you sign up, become a supporter, and uh, help support us as well if you can on our website to help us get more content like this out to you. A like and subscribe goes a long way too. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and we can't wait to see you in the next Ibracorp video.